around the rim of the vast Pacific, nations reckon up the grim toll of the seismic shocks that triggered a week of devastating earthquakes and volcanic eruptions in Chile, and tidal waves and tropical storms that battered every shore from the Philippines and Japan to Alaska. This is the town of Yankee Way in Chile, some 600 miles south of Santiago, one of the hardest hit in a nation where famine, exposure, and plague now threatened to add to the nearly 5,000 lives lost. Emergency relief has poured in, but the nation's problems of reconstruction are of a crushing magnitude. On the other side of the Pacific, the Philippines were first smashed by the titanic force of the tidal wave, triggered by Chile shocks 10,000 miles away. Then, one of the worst tropical storms in many years lashed the islands. The 18-hour downpour and resulting floods on Luzon sent the water level up over 15 feet with such speed that most people had no time to flee to the highlands. On the main island of the Philippines, 108 drowned in the floods, 150 were missing, in addition to a tidal wave toll of 20 dead. This disaster may trigger a political crisis over the lack of flood control. In Paris, police break up a non-violent demonstration on the Champs-Élysées by a group who practice what they preach. They don't lift a finger to hinder the cops who sling them into the paddy wagon. Of course, they don't help either. They oppose the use of force to solve any problem whatsoever. No particular political question is involved. They are not pro or anti anything except violence. Limp but triumphant, they are carried away by principle. Russia's favorite American concert pianist receives a rousing ovation from Muscovites as he arrives to begin a month-long tour. Van Cliburn, whose meteoric rise to fame began with his winning the International Tchaikovsky Piano Competition in Moscow, has since become a top favorite here at home. But the popularity of the likable young Texan has more than kept pace in the Soviet Union. Cliburn cleared this tour with the United States State Department in advance. Despite the current chill in the Cold War, American cultural exchanges still score a hit in Moscow. At Indianapolis, the 44th annual 500-mile Speedway Classic is marred by tragedy before the race is underway. Balloons signal the parade lap, and as the speedsters circle the track, a makeshift 30-foot scaffold topples, hurling over 100 spectators out of the crowd below. Two die, 70 are injured in the tragedy, which goes almost unnoticed by most of the 175,000 in the crowd. Cries of pain and terror are drowned out 10 feet away by the hubbub of the onlookers watching the start and the thunder of the high-powered motor. The race itself is one of the most thrilling in Speedway annals. After barely a hundred miles, it settles into a seesaw duel between Jim Rathman, a veteran contender, and last year's winner, Roger Ward. At blazing speeds, they trade places again and again, while every important lap record is shattered. Finally, Rathman streaks across, 12 seconds in the lead, with record speed, 138 and 3 fourths miles an hour. A long sought victory for Jim Rathman. At Epsom Downs, a perfect day for the Derby, and 350,000 turn out for Britain's greatest horse race. The royal family, who rank with the nation's most ardent horse fanciers, are present, making complete the occasion, which is as much a carnival as it is Britain's number one flat race. Seventeen three-year-olds go to the start of the mile-and-a-half event, the 181st running on the famous horseshoe-shaped track. International field, it's a French entry, Angers, who is the heavy favorite. Midway, Angers fell and broke its leg. Tragic accident that opens up the field. It's anyone's horse race now.
Rounding the final turn, watch England's own St. Paddy running fifth. St. Paddy breaks away just following the turn to charge into the lead with a terrific burst of speed. Riding St. Paddy is one of Britain's most popular jockeys, Lester Piggott. St. Paddy went into the Derby with odds of 7-1. Paddy thunders into the finish a good three lengths out front. It's a great day for England after many a derby taken by French or Irish entries. St. Paddy wins $92,000 first place money and national glory on the rolling downlands of Epsom.